successful. If it's anything like me when I first started out, it was very rarely. So I've started on a framework on how I can more easily replicate art that other artists have done. And it is the 3C to QTP method. Yep, it sounds a little bit like a Android from Star Wars, but that's what I'm going with for right now. And that stands for consistency, color, composition, quantity, quality, technique, and pouring medium. And if you can understand those pieces about a uh, technique that you see or about the art that an artist does, you're going to be much better off trying to replicate their artwork. And I want to try it today. Over the last couple of weeks, I've been watching some of the art that Denny Joe has created, which she calls the Ghosty Marble Pour. And this technique just creates some beautiful light colors on dark colors with some accent that's very simple yet elegant. And so I want to try and recreate it. So we're going to go through each of these items that I mentioned, the 3C to QTP, and tell you what I gleaned from her videos and from some other videos that people have worked on and how I would go about replicating. So first of all, consistency. For consistency, I know that she's putting a, a black base that uses Artist Loft soft body acrylic, although she has the Flow acrylic, so the older version of this, and Floetrol. So that's going to be, those two together without much water is going to be a, a medium consistency paint. The paints on top are uh, paint along with uh, Floetrol for the metallic. She does gold and some other colors. And then the white is satin enamel and a uh, white. I don't have the white that she uses. She uses the one Master's Touch from Hobby Lobby, but I have the Essentials Titanium White, which I'm going to try. And that is slightly thinner. I know that because of how the paint spreads out. Part of that's the satin enamel, but part of it is because the paint is slightly thinner. So that is just slightly thinner. So a medium, uh, medium thin consistency. So the next is color. The color she used on the video I'm gonna be trying to replicate is black as the base. She's got the white and then she has gold. I want a little bit more color, so I'm gonna make a little bit of these Pebeo uh, metallic paints and use more than just one of the accents. For composition, we're going to put a base coat on. We're going to put a little bit of flood color, plop some paint down and some uh, of the accent paint down, and then I'm going to spin it, although I could tilt it off also. So that's kind of what the composition is. And what happens is the little bit of white and accent paints in the middle really opens up, especially because of the satin enamel, and gives you this uh, ghostly uh, look, which is why she calls it the ghosty pour. Uh, for quantity, of paint, in this case, I'm gonna probably use less than normal. I have a 10 by 10 canvas. Uh, if I multiply it together, I have 100 square inches plus the 10 square inches here, 10 square inches here, so I have 120 square inches. Divide it by 25, that's a kind of a normalized way to calculate, and that gives me, I need five ounces of paint. I'll probably need less than that. I'm probably gonna do uh, three or uh, four ounces of paint of the black and then you know maybe a half ounce of each of these and then I'll have a little bit too much plus I'll have some paint that I can do some testing with quality again you can't use the craft metallic paints because it will spread out way too much the satin enamel is going to let the white spread out a little bit for the accents we don't want them to spread out so I can't use craft paint because we know that's very thin very light paint and it would just come to the surface and spread out. We don't want that. So I'm gonna use higher quality paints. I'm only gonna put flow trawl and I'm gonna leave them a little bit thicker so they don't uh, expand as much as the white does. The technique, again, I mentioned that Denny Joe calls it the ghosty, ghost pour or because we there is a type of pour with swipes that we call the ghost pour, she's calling it the ghosty pour. And you can also use a marble to kind of move your pattern around. I'm not gonna do that today. I'm gonna to do it without the marble. Last but not least is pouring medium. So her pouring medium is Floetrol. So that's all we're gonna to use today. So let me get some of this paint made up. I'll show you kind of how I did it, the consistencies, and then we're gonna attempt it for the first time on this video. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna strain our Floetrol. I just wanna show you Floetrol, if you let it sit for a while, let me just show you here. It turns, it separates from the the initial look, you can see this is just liquid. It's just, there's no paint or anything there. That's just clear liquid. 
and you want to make sure you shake this up. When you shake it up, you get little pieces of paint down inside that create uh, little blobs of paint on your painting. So obviously I want to uh, strain that. I just strain it into a cup and then from the cup I go into my other cups. So we're going to do that and... Oh crap. And this is what happens when you shake the flow chawl without putting the cap back on. So now I'm gonna clean up the mask and we'll be right back. Denny Joe hasn't given us the exact recipe and I can understand why it takes a lot of work to figure this kind of stuff out. She did tell us that she uses half the flow acrylic from Artist Loft and then half flow chawl, so that's what I'm doing here. For my base coat, I'm gonna have a little bit more than normal. I have 60 grams of flow chawl and I'm gonna get uh, 60 grams of black too, so get me 120. And she mentioned that she doesn't add water to this. So we're gonna see how thick it is after we mix up this painting and kind of work out the consistency again. So here's that black mixed up. It's actually more like a medium thick consistency. And we'll do some testing just in case we have to add some water to this, but that's how she says she does it. So we're gonna follow that directly. And so after thinking about it, the uh, Mars Black pearlescent paint won't really work very well, so I'm not going to use that, I'm just going to use these three. And we're just going to do one part paint, one part flow chawl. And any leftover, I just put it right back in the, in the container. And now for the white, I don't know the mixture. I know that it was Hobby Lobby white and satin enamel. I'm gonna try one part satin enamel, two parts paint, and we're gonna go from there. I do think I want a little bit more of this, so. And then once again, we're gonna go one part flow trawl to one part paint. And here's the consistency of the white paint. Maybe a little bit less thin than the, or a little bit thinner, sorry, than the black. And here's the red, it is very thick. So these were probably, probably gonna need to, at least a little bit of water, but we'll see. So the next thing I always wanna do is test. I don't wanna do this whole pour without verifying that my consistency are right or that my color mixtures are right or at least close to what I'm expecting. So we're just gonna do a quick test. I made too much paint partly because I wanna be able to test and partly because it's easier to make them in a little bit larger quantities. So I'm just gonna pour a little bit of my black here. And first, I just want to see what the white does just by itself. And as you can see, I'm not getting any kind of reaction, and I believe that's because it's just too thick. So... I'm going to add a little bit of water. And what I'm going to do is just move this over to the side a little bit. Not quite enough. So I want to change my consistency enough that it's noticeable or else it's not going to do anything with this. Once again, I'm getting almost no reaction at all. So that got really thin there. All right, so we're back. I've done a bunch of different experiments with the paints that I mixed up. Again, remember I mixed them up uh, without any water. So the first test that I did was this one. I didn't get any of the ghosting on the outside, so I actually knew that at least the white needed to be thinner. I thought the black needed to be slightly thinner too also, so I thinned up the white a tiny bit and got this. Then I thinned up the white, it looks like way too much because then I got this flocculation where it kind of separates, which means it doesn't really have enough binding power. Uh, so I added some more paint to the black just to make it thicker, just to make sure that it wasn't the black that was causing that, but it's not, it was the white that was causing it. 
Uh, I did another test with the color just to see how the color would show with this other paint. And then I added a tiny bit of Liquitex pouring medium right here to give it a little bit more strength and that actually got rid of the flocculation. Now I need a tiny bit, I'm maybe a half a teaspoon I put in this two ounces of white and that really helped it out. I also added a little bit more white paint so ultimately it's probably going to be half and half white paint and the satin enamel and then a teeny tiny bit of the Liquitex pouring medium and that is really what I got and that is what I want to try and get a painting with so that's what we're going to do next. All right so first we're going to use about half of my paint here. We're just going to get this everywhere kind of like a base base flood coat or a base coat sorry not a flood coat. So I did mention I wanted to do this on a on my cake spinner, which means I'm gonna have to take my All right, so now that we got that covered, use the rest of our paint here in the middle. Save some just in case. Now what she does is she does a couple of random drops and then kind of makes her own Patterns, you can see I have way too much white here, but I mean, I didn't use even hardly any of that. I still have two ounces left, so I got lots to play with next. These paints, uh, I did add a little bit of water, so they're more like a straight medium consistency. Maybe you can see better over here. You make a mound, hardly mound upon a mound, and then go away. So we're just going to add some accents. You can see this is sinking a lot more than the other one, so it's definitely more dense. All right, so let's see how this spins. All right, so is this as good as Denny Joe's? Heck no. This is the first time I've ever done it and hers are beautiful. Will it, will it work? Absolutely, I think, I think I'm close. It might need to be a little bit less thin so it doesn't spread out quite as much and I use way too much white paint. And then the lighter color paint I probably need to make, or the accent colors I probably need to make a little bit thinner so it can spread out a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit. Uh, in this case, it's just too thick and it just is falling straight to the bottom. But I'm not gonna do any of the flocculation that I had before. This has been sitting here for about 15, 20 minutes. Overall, I would say this is a success and I have a ton of, I mean, I have two ounces of paint here to keep using and I have a ton of this paint left over so I can do a lot more testing. I just need to make up some more of this uh, black. So I'll probably do uh, some more small canvases and maybe another big canvas. So just to remind you, the 3C2QTP 
consistency, color, composition, quantity, quality, technique, and pouring medium. When I do a painting, I'm, I'm thinking about all of those up front and just writing down my thoughts about each. I'm starting off uh, creating the consistency of my paint and doing a bunch of testing like I did here so I can validate the assumptions that I made. And then I, in this case, I'm doing a medium sized painting. This is a 10 by 10. I'll probably do a couple of these to really hone in the skill and then start working on some bigger ones. But that is how I replicate an acrylic pour from a different artist. Now the swipe is another painting that a lot of people want to figure out how to use. And if you watch this video here, it will give you all the tools you need to make a beautiful swipe acrylic pour.